live from San Diego, California here at the Aesthetic Meeting 2017. I'm here with Amin Kalahi, who is a Norwegian plastic surgeon. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Great pleasure to be here. Thank you. So uh, uh, Dr. Kalahi is a member of the Norwegian Society of Aesthetic Surgery, which is one of our international affiliate partners. And so today we're here to do the next International Spotlight Program interview. And we have a hot topic in mind today, which is gluteal augmentation. So this is something that we've seen in the news a lot. Um, there's been an article that was recently published in ASJ all about this. ACERV um, developed a task force to address some of the issues that we've been seeing in the media. So Dr. Kalahi, um, based on your experience in gluteal augmentation, is fat or implants your preference? Well, thanks. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. It's uh, very re relevant uh, questions because uh, we really don't do implant anymore. Uh, they are associated with a lot of complications in many studies up to 40% and especially with aging and the many times the uh, implant exposure and uh, all these uh, complications. So we really don't believe in it and we don't recommend it to be done. Uh, having said that, also it's the fat augmentation when it comes, also it gives another possibility which didn't exist before. So this is a huge possibility for the, for the patient, they love it because also it's a win-win situation, they take fat from other area and put it in there. So it's kind of harmonization of, uh, of your body, uh, you reinvent in your same wasted part of the fat, put it in, the, in your button or in your finger. So We've seen some fatalities here in the U.S. I'm sure you've seen this in the news. Internationally, what does the landscape look like? How do you address this with your patients? Do you warn them about the potential complications? Very good question, and we have to be very honest with our patients because this is a procedure which has a really high risk of complication, fatal, com fatal complications, especially if it's done wrongly. And wrongly means injecting in the muscle, injected under the muscle. In the U.S., as you mentioned, there are 23 deaths, uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> documented, because of mostly the intramuscular and submuscular injection because of lung emboli and implant thrombosis or even uh, bleeding. Some infection also has been, uh, I mean, reported in, in London and patient died because of metastasis by seat. And so we have to be honest with our patient, tell them, look here, Okay, this is a win-win situation, it's excellent procedure, but still it has a great possibility for a high risk complications. So how can we address this? Of course, I mean, luckily until now in Norway, we had no fatal like uh, complications, but we have to tell them, look, number one, don't exceed a high amount of, of injection of fat. Number two, don't inject into the muscle or under the muscle. And number three, where you inject also is very important. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter that I make the patient happy to make you one liter or two liters, and then the patient will die later, or will have compartment syndrome, or will have skin necrosis, etc. It's our responsibility to say no to this patient because there are a lot of the media outside which are giving the, the patients a high unrealistic expectation. So, like in Kardashian or every other. We don't know if, I mean, these are how much they are real, how much they are manipulated, but still these are really not the, the ideal uh, expected result for our patients. So we need to choose our patients, educate them, and to say no when they are not candidates. So this is a perfect segue to the next question, which is about the sensationalism of gluteal augmentation. You mentioned Kim Kardashian, um, celebrities like J-Lo. These are uh, procedures that are happening here. What is it like internationally? In Norway, is there a famous celebrity who's known for having this procedure? Do the media sensationalize it, or is it the celebrities who are um, proponents of such procedures? Well, this is a good question. I have been interviewed with the Norwegian uh, TV recently, and they ask almost the same question. But we, we cannot say because of our ethical rule who is who did the operation or not. But I can say for sure they are from all society classes, you know, are doing this operation. It's not really selected to models or to like poor or rich. Okay. It's from all kind of really society range. So, and this is good because you, you spread it to everybody. Huh? But again, this is what is about. Don't look only at the newspaper or the media, see, oh, this is 
I will have exactly as her. It's not correct. You are not like her, number one, and you don't really know the results for sure there. And the third thing is always about harmonization of, I mean, you say figure in from behind, it included the abdomen, including the thigh, all this is we have to take in consideration. And it's no problem if you do it one more time, then you are in, 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 in a safe place. So the, the safety of your procedure is the most important. So patient education and basically informing them in advance of the risks and complications to make sure that expectations are met and safety procedures are, um, it, that it's handled responsibly and the outcomes are as good as possible. Absolutely. So rather I do it one more time if the patients are not satisfied with the volume and I tell them some of the like the, the outcome maybe I am not satisfied myself because of the anatomy of the of the of the gluteal area or because of the amount of fat or because of the resorption of the fat which happened in um, about 30% but then we can do it again. So rather we we, we concentrate on the safety of the patient than to have just put too much and then we will have this complication. So it's a really very crucial issue and we need to educate our patients and to say no also. This is what is important. I mean, 23 patients in, only in the United States, a lot, lot more internationally. We don't have statistics and there is a black numbers also behind it. The, the death were are not uh, registered or they are registered in the wrong uh, reason, or they have renal failure, but it's because of the, of the gluteal operation. So really it's better that we be the advocate, the lawyers of our patient, than let it to the judges and the media, and even some one question was raised, shall we ever, I mean, do this operation? Or maybe we have to stop it. Mm -hmm. Because if we look at the risk of this operation, listen, in aesthetic and anesthetic operation, the death rate is one of 44,000. 44,000. Giving in consideration the statistic we have now here about the gluteal augmentation with fat, the death rate is one of 3,000. It's huge. It's unacceptable. So better we take the lead and show the patient uh, the, the limitation of it and say no when it's really not in the interest of our patient or whatever. Thank you so much. It's been very insightful. We appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure.